I'm in Welford National Park. I've been here probably 12 days now just relaxing. Haven't done any filming, but it started raining about a day and a half ago, just after I did a resupply at Junda. So I've got another big, beautiful storm cell sweeping through here. You can just see the dark clouds, dark and gray. Yesterday I had a beautiful lightning storm all along that horizon. And the ranger came around this afternoon and told me that they've closed the park, so I'm the only person in the park now. He said I could stay for the time being. Uh, I've got enough food and water to last me at least another 10 days, which I'm booked in for. So they're expecting at least another 20 millimeter, which is pretty good for the area. But this, the tracks do come pretty wet and slippery, and this is a bit of a, a black soil country, so my thongs have got a couple of inches of extra mud on the bottom when I'm walking around. So it's not the kind of country you can get out of easily or at least without making a mess of the tracks. But it's beautiful though. So I'm quite happy to sit here and just continue reading. Just sit through the storm cells coming through. Gives me the chance to use my pop-top camper. It survived last night perfectly dry, so nothing got in. All the wind blowing either side is all good. But yeah, beautiful little experience to see what it's like to have these outback storms sweep through. So back to reading for me for the time being and I'll check in later and show you how my trip's progressing over the next 10 days. The cell's just hit now and beautiful, that fresh crisp smell of, of rain in the outback. Beautiful. Cooled down a fair lot. It was really quite hot a few days ago, just blowing. Betty Furnace today actually arrived with a dust storm, so I had big swooms of, of, of red dust just blowing around. I had to keep all the windows shut so I didn't get the car filled with red dust. So this is a nice change. And you can see I'm actually sitting inside my Defender, which is also a nice change. It's actually, normally if it was raining, I'd be lying down right now, and that would be as far as I could go unless I sat in the driver's seat. And you spend too long in the driver's seat driving and then sitting in it, it just gets really uncomfortable. So I'm still just starting to get ideas now how I want to develop the storage over here. Because maybe my sink here as well, with a little tap which has a pump running so I can get water and, and do cooking inside. Bit of a stainless steel top here. Oven over here, so... It'll be another few months of just getting some experience, but I'm getting the, the ideas now coming in how I can redesign this space so it's more livable for long-term travel. Absolutely beautiful to see, but it's not gonna break a drought, but if you give it some time, you at least keep the animals and trees alive. Here she is in all her glory. It's been absolutely beautiful the last couple of weeks. So much more room. The solar's been working wonderfully as well. I've got a trap in down in the river. The river's come up just a little bit, I've noticed. A bit more flow coming through from all the water in the catchment. Yet I've caught a couple of crayfish in the last two weeks of trying. Biggest thing I've ever caught in the fresh water. Big, big as a dinner plate, it's huge. So I'm still hoping to get another few of those before I leave here. Also caught a couple of fish in the trap, so don't know what the were, so I let them go. But I'm, other than, I had four people come in that I've seen the first few days camping here. Other than that, in the park range of today, I've been alone for pretty much the whole two weeks. Another ten days to go. So this is a beautiful spot really to get away from it all. Like I said, no internet reception out here. So pretty much disconnected from the world, which is nice beautiful place to relax and just enjoy the atmosphere and that clean fresh air. I'm just out about night time now doing some spotlighting and I'm looking at the frogs there's quite a few frog species around which is just incredible to see that only a matter of you know four days ago it was dry dusty very hot and now there's frogs around which I just don't know where they hide they must be under a lot of leaf litter or in tree hollows or maybe they're in the creek and when it rains they'll jump up out and 
get looking around it, I found a nice green one here, fairly large size. morning. I've been up probably most of the night. It's been absolutely like gale coming through throughout the night. Pretty strong winds but the pop top survived but I had this the awning on the side so it was acting like a giant sail so it was hard to get any sleep because the car would keep getting pulled over, pulled over and, and rocking. So I just took that all down this morning and, and moved my car to face it into the wind and it's looking a lot more stable now. It's not, not as much of a side to side action. Plus I also had the ants discovering my food box, so I had to, had to move out quick before the ants moved in. Probably a good couple hundred running up along the, the roof lining in there. But looks like a beautiful morning otherwise. All that rain soaked in now and starting to dry off from yesterday's winds. But look, look at that beautiful river and golden sun. Already I can hear it's a lot quieter up here by facing the car and the wind, so that's something I have to be mindful of in the future. If I know it's gonna be blowing a gale throughout the night, just to move the car around. Now it's much more aerodynamic compared to a defender with a big sail on the side, which is rocking side to side, so this is much, much nicer. So I'm gonna get back to bed, and when it gets too hot, I'll get up and then relax some more. What a life. I'm gonna go down and check my yabby trap, see if I caught anything. I only caught two yabbies thus far over the last couple of weeks. But it's just interesting to see how the water's come up from the rain. It's at least about, about a foot, two feet, two feet deeper. Nothing today. Might be time to put some new bait in it. Just got the old crayfish I caught last time and some old meat. brought my Kestrel along on this trip just so I can give an accurate temperature. Some people have asked the type of temperatures I'm experiencing. So currently inside the pop top in the shade it's 36.5 degrees Celsius. So I'll step outside now in the full sun and see what it is outside. Outside about a standing height. It's varying about a degree up and down due to the wind. It's cooling effect. But it's around about 35 to 36 degrees Celsius out here and the wind speed 
maximum has been 26 and a half kilometers per hour. I'll just stick it down here on this hot, hot surface and see if I can get the temperature to go up a bit. And it just hit 40 degrees, so it's a lot hotter down the, on the surface. My feet are feeling it. About 45.7 degrees Celsius on the ground. It's got a bit of bite to it. But it's yeah, much safer to stay in the shade. Out here there's this wind because it's so drying. This one doesn't show humidity, but it's such a dry, harsh wind. I can sort of feel my skin's a bit clammy, so I know I'm sweating, but there's no sweat coming down because it instantly evaporates off. So I have to make sure I keep drinking water. Like every hour I take a, probably a, a cup of water, and that usually keeps me pretty safe and well hydrated. Otherwise you can easily become dehydrated in these kind of hot dry winds. So it's gotta be mindful of that when you're out here in these hotter temperatures. It's still just dropping down back to normal now, about back around 36 degrees Celsius. But otherwise a pop top's probably a safer place to be. Just doing a bit of rendering now of some of my old videos. So I still need to get this worked out a bit better so I can sit inside a bit more easier. Looks like downstairs temperature is a bit hotter. It's about 39.4 degrees Celsius and climbing. So it's a lot nicer upstairs where I've got the three big windows cooling me down. The bedroom, oh wow, I can just feel that instantly. I come up that little bit mezzanine and Oh, much cooler than what I used to have with the, the two doors, two uh, rear door windows down and the back door fly mesh on. Downside is if I leave the door open, I get all these flies in here and it's hard to get them out. <laughs> I have to give them a bit of a whack later on tonight before bed, otherwise they're flying over the place. It gets pretty annoying. But still, it's it's just mid mid October at the moment, so it's still quite comfortable mid October. You know. I'm the only person in the park. <laughs> it's beautiful isolation. And it's still quite beautiful. And there's a massive river there I can jump, jump in if I need to and cool down. So I'm um, living in paradise, basically. It's interesting to note that the temperature difference on the body panels. Like Land River always used a white roof for most of their range until later models when they start having air conditioning. I can put my hand on this and that's about, that's as much as I can handle, it gets pretty hot. But if I touch the white roof, it's nothing, it's very cool. I just touched my solar panels, very cool. So that white roof really does help a lot, reflect a lot of the heat away compared to a darker body. I see some defenders with black roofs, it's all stylish and that, but I'd hate to drive that out in the outback and not have air conditioning because that would just be hot. You'd probably cook an egg on top. Simple technology, but again, a lot of the, lot of the early Land Rovers are all white. <laughs> it's part of the, the system, I guess, to help cool it and to cheap paint as well. Had another pretty big storm. Passed over last night, a lot of strong winds come through. You see the winds still up now. But they're just incredible to see how the water's still rising. It's probably risen a good three or four feet in the last week since all the rain come through. So it's sort of draining in from the catchment. These trees are starting to go under. I used to walk down there easy enough. So there's nothing in the traps anymore, not even any cherubins. So I'm wondering whether the fresh water coming through might be disturbing them. It might be heading in deeper, I don't know. But I'll keep on trying. I've still got a bit of bait left. Otherwise, a beautiful morning.
So look at that, the water's still rising. It's probably been over a meter now. It used to be way below this log. So <laughs> I can basically put my foot in, foot, feet in the water now. If I sit on that log, I'll check again this morning, see if I get lucky. Just a few cherubin. Not too bad size, but it's not worth cooking them. A success today. Look at the size of it. Huge. Biggest thing I've ever probably caught. I think it's insane. It's only been in probably maybe four or five hours. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous. See if I can get them out. Maybe a good look at them. Uh, turn around. Claws facing the other way. Come on, come on. The size of it. Beautiful. Huge. So that's what I've been after. This is number three you have caught thus far. So it's a bit of a meal. You get a, you need, you need to get a, quite a few of them in order to get a big, good enough meal, but. Yeah, beautiful. Biggest things I've ever caught in fresh water, this thing. Oh, and I thought yabbies, I was thinking small, but these are like giant crayfish. So you can see that's what I've been catching. Absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, you get a few of them, you get a good feed. Just a matter of catching them. Huh. But they are delicious eating, really nice and sweet when you get them straight out, put them into a pot, boil them, boil them up, and straight in the mouth. It's so sweet and succulent. Nothing you could other, otherwise probably taste you, that you could buy. It's just straight, fresh from nature. Huh. morning it's about 6 40 a.m. to go do an hour walk out along the track yeah, you need to start exercising more I've been getting pretty weak lately not really doing much so I'll bring you along for the walk show you some of the sights or things I might see a few tracks in the in the sands We're very still this morning at least the wind hasn't kicked up yet very beautiful Ooh, just heading back, I just realised I forgot my spot tracker as I'll be walking about half an hour away from camp. If I get bitten by something, it's extremely unlikely or, you know, hurt myself or have some sort of stress, I'll be on my own because there's no one else in the park except the park ranger as the park's still closed for the time being. So I'll go back and grab that and just carry it on me just in case. As I am, you know, solo traveller, you've got to start thinking about these things, you can't head off from the car. Uh, without some mean of communication. There's always, you know, very rare chance the car could burn down, have some sort of electrical fire. When I come back and find I have no car, so <laughs> all it takes is a little bush rat to climb in during the night and have a nibble on different wires which might not be fused. So back to camp, grab the spot, then back on the track. That's it, just to be sure. You just never know. It's a nice open plain lands around this area. Not much real grass or feed around. It's mostly very spiky, spiny type stuff. Wouldn't be much you can eat from it. There's 
a lot more silent out here. As in here, there's very few birds, occasional little one scattered around. Certainly beats going for a walk out here than in the city with all the traffic and the smog and noise. Only thing you can hear right now are the flies. But again, you can see where I am. Basically, there's really nothing else here. There's no one around. So you really got to think of that safety factor. Just in case so I become overwhelmed with heat or whatever or cramps in my legs. I've reached the point I made yesterday, so it's time to turn around. By the time I make it back to camp, that should be one hour of walking. And I can do some yoga, try and loosen up the back and muscles, and then breakfast and into the day. Just look how cool all this dried mud is. It just it's like all little bits of paper all nice and shiny on top the fine silts curled up look at that beautiful it just glimmers and glistens in the sunlight Just look at this big girl here. I just actually had all my, all my doors open a little bit because I'd just been doing some filming and didn't want to close the doors. And I come back to close the door and find this little girl right near the uh, entrance. Could have had a visitor during the night. <laughs> it's beautiful big huntsman. Last time I think I'd try the trap and got another one. As you can see, very, very big and beautiful. Nice big claws. This is actually not the biggest one. I, the one I caught on the second, the second one I caught was much bigger, like the, yeah. It's, it's, I've got pictures I'll show, but oh, this is so pretty though. But yeah, you get a few of these, you get a nice feed. Incredible. Now, that's a great result, I think. Four craze in three weeks. It's just a bit of fun. On the other hand, you know, it gives you something else to do other than read books and and then relax. So it's nice to see what's actually in here. Back to camp and continue with my reading. And then only a day or two to go, then I'm out of here and consider where I'm heading next. Don't know yet, might be Diamantina, might be heading north. I'll just see how I feel. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to help support the creation of more videos and see behind the scenes and bonus content, join me on Patreon. Click on the Patreon button on the side now. Thanks for watching.